I don't think anyone wears a turtleneck while baking. That's not ideal. But it's 30 degrees Fahrenheit outside and there is no heater in Frederick's house. So deal with it. Hi friends, my name is Fringed Vintage Pants. Thank you for that comment. You've been doing it for like three times, I think. And welcome to Frederick's Asian Kitchen. <laughs> I'm never gonna do that again. I think this is my third cake I've done on camera, right? Sorry, I just have so much cake, you know? But today's my boyfriend's birthday. Turns out he's a Capricorn too. And my ex was a Capricorn, so. <laughs> I'm so happy. I'm kidding. I'm not, but I'll get over it. He's turning 19 today, which means, yes, I'm the older one. Shut up. And two days ago was our four month anniversary. <laughs> yes, four months. Not a great accomplishment, but why is this so important for me that I felt the need to make a video? Because, fun fact, this is my longest relationship I've ever had. I don't want to talk about it. So I wanted to bake a cake to celebrate my four month anniversary and his birthday, even though he's not here and I won't see him for like another week. I don't care. I'm going to eat it in spirit for him. My inspiration behind this, if you've watched Schitt's Creek, you'll understand. When David and Patrick reached their four month anniversary, their family baked a cake for him because that too was his longest relationship ever. And I resonate with that. So let me celebrate by making a carrot and walnut cake with cream cheese frosting. Inspiration from, well, not inspiration, plagiarized by Claire Saffitt's recipe. She's made a video about it. She gives a whole tutorial. I'll link it down below. If you want the detailed recipe, it's there too. I'm gonna follow it because I love cream cheese frosting. It's my favorite one. And I don't care about my stomach. You're gonna pay attention and you're gonna like the cream cheese. And my body will not explode with acne again, right? So there's a lot of ingredients. I had to go shopping for this. Oh, don't mind me. I'm just shopping with my tote bag. Reusable. <laughs> Try to use reusable ones, kids. I got a new silicone brush because my first one snapped in half when I tried to make bread and they didn't have a cake spatula for frosting. Those are the best I can do and it look cute. I had to buy two cake pans because my mom threw out the other ones because she didn't want to use them. So I'm happy. The only cloves they had left were from McCormick Organic. This cost $9. For what? I need like one pinch of this. So I'm very happy. Also, these are like $5. I don't know why. Whatever. So don't mind me while I just get all my ingredients prepared on the side. Okay, so for this whole recipe, you're going to need walnuts, carrots, buttermilk, ginger, vanilla extract, all-purpose flour, ground cinnamon, baking powder, kosher salt, baking soda, ground ginger, ground cloves, large eggs, granulated sugar, dark brown sugar, vegetable oil, butter, confectioner sugar, and cream cheese. This is easily the most complicated cake I've ever done. I'm not a stickler for like fancy cake. I'm the one that eats anything that resembles a cake. So high hopes for this one and high stakes because this needs to work. Other tools you might use are a spatula, stand mixer slash hand mixer, food processor or box grater, parchment paper, and cake pans. Speaking of food processor, look at this. I can't wait to use this. I've never used it on camera yet. Unfortunately, Frederick's Asian Kitchen does not have the budget for a stand mixer yet, but we might get one soon. I'm also going to be following this recipe live. I've already watched Claire's video twice. I'm watching it again just to make sure I get everything right. I'm putting it right here for reference. So I don't have pecans, I only have walnuts, but you can use either or. And I'm gonna toast them in my toaster oven for five minutes. And apparently my mom has lost every single cup measure besides the one cup one. And I left my measurement stuff back at my apartment. So, ooh. <laughs> While that's toasting, I'm gonna grate my carrots. I don't have a box grater, I only have this, which I don't think is worth. And my food processor has a grating option, so I'm just gonna trust that that one will work. So this is the food processor blade. I never used it before, but I hope it works. Pop it in. I'm nervous. If this is two pounds, I need one pound. Okay, I guessed a pound of garret. I guessed a pound of garret. I guessed a pound of carrots. And I think all I do is just turn it on. Oh, I'm scared. So you first insert it. So I've loaded the cockpit and then I'm gonna put this on top and then we're gonna, why doesn't it wanna work? Oh, it's not on. There we go. That was sexy. That's so cool. All right, I'm just gonna keep blending it then. There are so many carabits flying everywhere, but overall, this is so fun. Okay, now we transfer it into this bowl. Am I trying to get every last bit of carrot in there? Yeah, what do you think I am? Once you have your mixture of carrots, th this looks so cool. <laughs> You're going to put one cup of buttermilk at room temperature in the mixture. I've never used buttermilk before. If anything, I use anything but her milk. 
Yeah, I know that was bad. Claire said if you do this step beforehand, it makes the carrots more tender. So that's why I'm doing this first because I know my ass is about to take four years to finish this recipe. I'm going to graduate college by the time I'm done with this. I'm gonna add more buttermilk because I feel like I didn't put enough the first time. She looked like she put a whole thing in. So I'm just gonna trust her. You don't wanna do this. Baking is not eyeballing. Don't listen to me. But when do you listen to me? Also on the wet ingredients is two teaspoons of vanilla extract. So that's the last of my bottle and ginger. Now, personally, I hate ginger. I've only liked it in sweets, but even then I like it in little bits. So you need one tablespoon. I'm just gonna assume this little chunk is one tablespoon because I'd rather use less than have it taste like a ginger cake. So you first wanna peel off the skin. I just use the back of a spoon to get it off. Oh, like it's so strong. This is like ginger from the Asian supermarket. This is that really intense, smell i think it's still gonna taste like ginger no matter what to me but that's fine less is more with this type of ginger i hate Ugh. when they make you drink ginger tea because you're sick but you hate ginger and then there's chunks of ginger in the tea welcome to my life if you like ginger good for you like you'll probably live forever because you'll just drink this every day but i am perfectly fine with dying a little bit earlier than to eat this. My mom used to grate them with this tiny little grater. Wait, I still have it. Do you see this? What is this? So I got her this one for Christmas because I said, mom, you deserve the one that Claire Saffitz uses. <laughs> the whole thing, sm everything smells like ginger. Ooh, that was almost my finger. Ah, that was almost my finger. Good thing this is dull because ginger is like literally a root and it's so woody that it just dulls metal somehow. Even though according to Pokemon law, steel should resist grass. All right, I think I've grated it as much as I can. I'm not gonna bother putting a chunk of it in. So you just tap it in. Oh, my buttermilk is orange now. So in this bowl, I'm gonna mix the dry ingredients. This is my best bowl, so I'm gonna save it for the mixing. Two and a half cups all-purpose flour. Easy, easy, I can, I can eyeball that. Now the harder stuff, teaspoon stuff. I've baked a lot, so I think I know what a teaspoon looks like. So two and a half teaspoons of ground cinnamon. I think this is actually a teaspoon, so I'm just gonna use this as my reference. One, two, two and a half. Don't, Don't make, make me, me say, say three. three. Now we need one teaspoon ground ginger. Ooh, I hate it. <laughs> One teaspoon baking soda. Don't ask why it's in the soup pot from Asian stores. It just is. Mm, that's enough. Two teaspoons baking powder. I didn't realize this until a few months ago, but there's actually a flat side to these lids or you can literally flatten your teaspoon and level it. Isn't that so neat? And two teaspoons salt. And I need one fourth teaspoon ground cloves. Tell me why I bought this much for one fourth teaspoon, $9. This is what my mixture looks like in case you're curious. Kind of think I did tablespoon instead of teaspoon now. I'm really just hoping this all turns out well. So instead of mixing wet into dry, you're going to first beat eggs and mix them with sugar. So four eggs in here. Okay, okay, I'm going to thank myself for thinking of this edit, my stream for giving me the Food Wars reference, and apologize on behalf of everyone who is just not putting headphones in. I'm, I'm sorry, why do you watch me anyways? Three quarters of a cup of both sugars. More eyeballing. <laughs> it doesn't fit. You know what that means. We spoon it out. I'm not sure if you're supposed to pack down the sugar to get it most accurate, but I'm just going to, because I'm assuming Claire would. Now she recommends hand mix. Now she recommends a stand mixer. So I'm hoping that a hand mixer will work. This is actually my first time using this because the last one broke. Oh, there's a whisking option. That's nice. I'll use that. That's cool. Okay, I'll just use this for now then. Maybe not. You good? Okay. We're going to beat it until it has slow dissolving ripples or something. I, I don't know. I'll show you when I get there. <laughs> Oh, it says bowl rest. This literally says bowl rest. And I said, what does that mean? You literally just do this. Mama, they can. I think that took 10 minutes to finish. Maybe five. I lost count. This is now my new DIY stand mixer for you. I'm pretty sure I got the slowly dissolving ribbons. I don't really know what they're supposed to look like, but I looked at Claire's video and this seems to be what she's going for. Plus the color has changed from brown to cream and i would like to get my cake done before the sun sets thank you next up is to combine everything so first you want to combine one third of the dry ingredients don't go everywhere don't ah. Ah. it's fine it's a big bowl big bowl what shit that's not right 
No, 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 no. I forgot to put one cup of oil in. Damn it. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> okay, so you were supposed to get a whole cup of vegetable oil and slowly incorporate in. How high can I go? How high? <laughs> okay, I think we're good. Now you're gonna add half of the wet mixture. Now I feel like I forgot an ingredient. Add one third of your dry ingredients again. <gasps> No, it's flying everywhere. All right, at this point, I'm just gonna do it by hand just until it's incorporated so that it doesn't fly in my face and in my glasses. Add the rest of the wet ingredients, love. So the reason why you're supposed to do this third, half, third, half, third method instead of just completely pour everything together is that everything will combine more easily and more cohesively. At least I think, I don't know. You think I'm a professional baker? I just listen to what Claire tells me to do. I just realized the walnuts are still in the oven and I totally forgot about them. They smell great. Thankfully they didn't burn. And before you add them, you need to make sure that they're all crushed. So I'm just going to transfer this into my little baggie, press all of the air out. <gasps> Don't, no, 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 rest. The closest thing that I have resembling a hammer is this. So this brings back memories. So I'm just gonna, don't mind me, just gonna whack my walnuts. I could food process them, but I don't want to use that thing anymore. It's already in the sink. All right, everything is crushed, and now we just transfer it into here. Wow, this actually smells so good. I'm just hoping it'll bake correctly. All right, now I have to somehow incorporate walnuts. I'm gonna add the rest of this in. I'm just gonna wipe down the sides to make sure everything is incorporated. It looks fine, but I have ruined many recipes just by assuming it's fine. Because I either did my measurements wrong, didn't combine ingredients in the right order. I'm gonna do this for one more minute just to be sure. I'm gonna open up my oven and preheat it to 350. Notice how it's also storage. This is enough for three cake pans. I bought two because I didn't wanna buy four. So we're just gonna make cupcakes for the rest. Is that okay? Okay, you don't get a choice. Before we put it in the pan though, I need to make some parchment paper. So I'm gonna outline it and then cut it out. All right. Okay, Miss Ma'am. One of these stupid pencils has to work. One little tip, you should cut inside your lines by like a little bit just to account for the thickness of the pan. Now it perfectly fits. And because it's curving like this, you can add some oil to make it stick to the pan, which is kind of counterproductive. You're gonna oil a pan to stick parchment. Don't see the point, but I get it. Now it's time to pour a mixture in. Can you stop? Can you just stop? This, oh, it just, <gasps> it flicked onto my sweater. I'm gonna have to eyeball this because I don't know how to evenly divide it between a cake pan. Normally you'd be dividing this amongst three cake pans, but because I'm doing two and two and then cupcakes, I'm gonna have to guess. So that's gonna be fun. Just another obstacle. Wait, that's not right. Why are these cake pans? Oh, Claire was talking about eight inch cake pans. I bought nine inch ones because that's all they had. So maybe I can just fit this whole mixture and then bake it for longer. Oh God, I don't know now. What if I bake it and then it burns the top and not the bottom? What if the inside is still liquid because I didn't bake it for long enough, but the top already looked <laughs> It hasn't even gone in the oven and I'm already freaking out. One's not even, I have to scoop some out. This one isn't even. What's the time? Oh my God, it's ready. It's ready to be baked. Uh, I'm not ready yet. Flatten it out, flatten it out. Um, um, I can do this. I know how to flatten it. Some wiggle, wiggle. All right, I'm putting it in. That's what he said. It's fine. One, don't spill it, don't spill it. Two, let's time it for 30. See how that goes. Well, I guess I can clean this up while I'm waiting. I stabbed the cake with my chopstick and the middle is, like I thought, too wet. So I did five more minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and work on the cream cheese frosting because I know the cakes need to cool for a while before I even bother frosting it or else it'll melt. One thing though, the cakes might've, they're, they're a little tall. They're like over the pan. Claire's recipe did not plan on it going over the pan. So like I thought, too much mixture in the nine inch cake pan. Either way, I know I can just cut off the round part and then keep it flat, but it happened. At least I'll have a tall cake. For the cream cheese frosting, you're going to need butter i don't know how much it doesn't say on the recipe so i'm just hoping i'm gonna eyeball it this is the only butter we had in the fridge it's spreadable butter she wanted to brown the butter i've never done that before because i don't use butter so we're just gonna see you're gonna set this onto medium heat stick the whole thing in i'm pretty sure vegan butter can't brown don't quote me on that but i don't think it has the lactic acid or whatever is in butter that actually makes it brown and it's already starting to sizzle 
Wow. All right, things are happening. I'm gonna have to multitask. I have to brown butter and, and check on this. We're gonna check on the cake again. How's it looking? That's still wet. Five more minutes for you. This is a 40 minute cake now. Oh my God, it's like liquid and oh no, it's not gonna bake. My cake is ruined. This anniversary sucks. And now I'm burning the butter, I think. Okay, once it starts sizzling, all she said was lower the heat and just let it get to a golden brown. Also, if the bubbles get smaller, then that's also a sign that it's browning. So this is what it looks like now. I'm going to check in on it in like maybe Five minutes. What do I do about the cake? <gasps> is it gonna burn? Can a cake burn? Can it burn? I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, I think something's happening. Everything is, everything is fizzing. The bubbles are getting smaller. I can't even see if, what color it is anymore. There's so many bubbles. What the heck? It just smells like butter. I don't know what brown butter is supposed to smell like. It's supposed to caramelize. I don't, I don't know. Wow. It's bubbling a lot. That happened very fast. So it went from big bubbles, big bubbles, <laughs> to just little tiny like foam now. I can't check the color of it though because there's so many bubbles still. Oh my God, this thing, this oven. Stop worrying me. I got too many things to worry about. There are so many bubbles. The, the color's gone. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off. I don't trust it. I don't trust myself. I got butter soup at this point. What the heck? How did this happen? What does the color look like? I can't see. What is this? Okay, so we're going to check on the cake again. Probably is terrible releasing all this heat, but okay. That felt a little bit better. It's still not cooked. I hate this. I'm going to lower it to 325 and I'm going to continue this for five more minutes because I'm scared I'm going to burn at this point. Oh, wow. That smells really good, actually. I can see my butter now. It is definitely browned. It's this golden brown and you want to take it off the heat before it even tries to burn because if it's on the pan or just in a hot pan, it will continue burning and eventually could probably get you a bad tasting butter. So I'm going to put it in this new bowl that I already washed, but it's fine. Oh, what the heck? How does that work? Why is it doing that? It didn't do that in the pan. You can keep cooking. I don't trust this. Third time checking on it. Mm, no, five more minutes. I can say it's getting better. It's no longer liquid. It's more of a, a dough, <laughs> an unfinished dough. You know what? Maybe it's done. I think it's time we call it quits. Five more minutes and I'll finally say it's done. All right, I think we're good now. I already took one of them out just to test and I'm gonna show you all how the other one came out. I also chopstick them and they both came out dry. So things are looking up. It actually flattened after it baked. I don't know why it does that, but I guess it, you know, it became erect and then it went so take that how you want. It baked pretty flat. I just took off the parchment. I'm gonna eat some, oh. Oh, okay, Frederick. That's pretty good. I mean, I barely can taste it, but like it tastes correct. So I'm just gonna lay these out here for them to dry. That popped out so easily and it's steaming. So yeah, definitely cannot frost for a while, but it is time to make the frosting. It's cooled down now to room temperature. And I also put in the fridge to speed it up and it smells so good. I did not know brown butter could smell that good. I totally take it back. Brown butter is amazing. You need one pound of cream cheese. I'm using Wegmans because I stand Wegmans always, but you can just use Philadelphia, I think. So like this, <gasps> I think most cream cheeses taste the same. This one tastes really good. And it was cheaper than the Philadelphia one. And I wanted to save money after paying $9 for cloves. Uh, you good? Thank you. I want to make sure I get as much cream cheese as possible. This is my favorite frosting ever. Like is cream cheese legal? Is it allowed to be this addictive? Yeah, this is definitely room temperature. There we go. Wow. So now I need to mix it again. Time to whisk again. Okay, how the hell did I do this the first time? Ah, it wasn't off. All right, this I wanted to be careful with because if butter goes into my eyes, I'm going to scream. All right, so I first wanted to mix the butter and cream cheese together to make sure that they got emulsified. Now we're going to add a whole pound of confectioner sugar. This is two pounds. So once again, I need to eyeball this. And I also know that this is about to go all over the world. It's going to go on a world tour, but I was stupid. Didn't pay attention. Claire uses a towel to prevent this. She literally does this, which is like so smart, so five head. I'm just dumb. Oh, it already smells like cream cheese frosting. Oh, so I'm just gonna keep adding a little bit each time until it tastes the way I want it to. All right, let's taste. Oh my God, it's magic. Literally three ingredients. How does it just do that? I'm adding some salt, by the way. And look, it's staying. It's not drooping. That's great. Not falling off. I know a lot of people like to BS when they say, I can taste the brown butter. No, I definitely can. Holy Jesus, this is the best thing in the world. So all I have to do is wait for this to cool down enough and then we're ready. I don't have to chop it. That thing is flat. But until then, I'm going to 
one second this is not for youtube i'm also going to chill this while we're waiting all right i think it's cooled down enough it's been basically 30 minutes i'm going to find my cake platter wherever it went it seems as though my cake platter has cracks in it so i'm not gonna risk that today let's just do a yield fashion plate frosting has thickened it feels perfect i love the texture do y'all see how good that looks i'm going to put a little dollop in the middle to prevent it from sliding place my first one. Oh, oh god let's think this through frederick how do i how do i scoop you something flat think or do I just do this? Place one down. Oh, it smells so good. Put this one to the side. Y'all are getting anxious because this is on the side of the table, aren't you? I'm just going to get a base down so that I can place the next one on. This is also a cake for one, so I don't care about the presentation too much. It does not need to be perfect. No one's going to see this but me. In my opinion, a cake should just taste good. I don't care how it looks too much. Next up, I'm going to place the second one. Oh, baby. Let's do it. I don't know what Claire called it, but she said do a thin layer of frosting around everything and then put more frosting on. That way it sticks easier. Kind of like putting down your foundation before everything else. Except this is very hard to do with this type of spatula. You need an offset one, but they didn't have any. I just want to eat cake right now. I don't want to die. <laughs> Why am I decorating? I just want to eat it. All right, so that's my thin layer of frosting. Now the thick layer. I'm not trolling, okay? She literally did this. Watch the video and see for yourself. She places all of it just on top and then glides it down. Oh my god. All right, that's a lot of frosting to work with. Let me just, uh, how do I go about this? I don't want it to fall too much. I'm just gonna let it droop down the sides. Let's do that. Let gravity do its thing. Okay, the sides are starting to fall. Oh, slow, slow down. Oh no, there's so much frosting. I don't know what to do. I think the cake is a little warm still. So that might be why it's melting a little bit. It's fine, it's fine. No one sees anything. I'll Photoshop it out. Oh my God, nothing is sticking. Claire, this is not working. Then it's gonna melt the butter inside the frosting and then it's gonna turn into, no. Everything is gonna be ruined. I'm getting sick looking at it because I know how much sugar is in here. You know when your body does that, it's just telling you you're about to regret this in five minutes. Damn right, do I care? No, because it's my anniversary. Maybe I'll do some swirls to make it pretty. I'm tasting the frosting, it's still cold, still tastes incredibly delicious and fat it just won't stay put i don't know what to do about that i mean who cares i just need it to look reasonably good for the thumbnail so like let me find an okay spot and then i'll take the photo we all know what i'm gonna do now give me the knife is this a good site no nope. let me just cut myself a slice why don't i don't mind if i do i don't need another plate okay ready 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 scoop it i don't have a cake knife i'm sorry oh oh <laughs> Catch it, catch it, catch it. <laughs> it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Oh my God, it's steaming. This bitch is still hot. I mean, that tastes so good. Oh my God, screw that slice. This is mine now. Seriously though, that baked pretty well considering the fact that I almost thought I burned it. Oh, I feel sick. God, let me take a lactate real quick. <laughs> this is not a spawny, just saying. Thank you for helping my stomach. Okay, well, that's all I have. I'm gonna go finish this. I'm gonna also let it cool down fully. Give it to my family, bring some back to New York once I see Joey, let him try it. He's never had carrot cake, so I hope he'll like it. And that's all I have. If you guys enjoyed, give it a like, leave a comment down below, subscribe for more videos every week. I post whenever I have time. So turn on my notifications so you don't miss them. Social medias are right here and follow my second channel, gaming channel and podcast channel. Fan of the week is by Dull Demon. Thank you for your submission. They don't have an Instagram, but they were on the Discord. And if you wanna be on the Discord, it's on Twitch only. Thank you so much for your submission. This looks incredible. And as always, I love you guys and everything is less than three. Girl, let me, <laughs> it's so, it's so hot. Bye.